Hey everybody, welcome back to our next video on troublesome terms in chemistry. The last video was about redox and there were so many things troublesome about that I had to leave some of my thoughts on the cutting room floor. I guess you'll just have to wait for the extended director's cut. So with my concert shirt donned, we will tilt our lance at our next term. This week we are talking about, well, week. Ah, and strong, get it? Weak and strong, yeah, that was, that was pretty clever. Strong and weak fall into the misunderstood bucket, and that's because our everyday understanding of those terms is radically different than that of a chemist. A normal person, for instance, may assume that a strong acid is a concentrated acid. But as we've learned, chemists are not normal people, and the term strong is not synonymous with concentrated, nor the term weak synonymous with dilute. In fact, they have really different meanings. Strong and weak refers to the relative amount of electrolyte dissociation. And if that's a little too fancy Nancy for you, let's break that down. Electrolytes are chemicals that break up into ions in solution. And another name for breaking up is dissociation. So electrolyte dissociation. A strong electrolyte completely dissociates. That means it breaks up into its component positive and negative ions. Imagine if you will a high school graduation ceremony where everybody takes off their mortar cap and tosses it into the air. All right, that's a complete separation of hand and hat. And that is a cracking analogy for a strong electrolyte. Complete separation, complete dissociation. A weak electrolyte is much less likely to break apart in solution. Most of those chemicals are gonna stay together. Imagine a high school graduation ceremony where instead you were asked to throw your wallet in the air. You can imagine very few people would take their wallet and toss it in the air. Most people would be holding on to their wallet, and that would be a lower amount of dissociation, hence a weak electrolyte. Most of the chemicals stay together. Now what's equally important is what the terms strong and weak don't mean. As I pointed out before, this has nothing to do with concentration. Concentration is the measure of how much of a compound is in the water. And this can be qualitative, like concentrated orange juice, or this can be more quantitative in terms of like 5% acetic acid or like 1.3 moles per liter. There's lots of ways to measure it. And so you can come up with a little pundit square of strong, weak, concentrated, and dilute. You can have strong concentrated acids. This is what you see in every action movie when someone's getting their face melted. So dilute a strong acid. You can take hydrochloric acid, a strong acid, and put just one drop of it in a bathtub. You could soak in that bathtub and not even realize hydrochloric acid is in there. You're soaking in it. In dilute hydrochloric acid? Mild. Well, more than mild. But that doesn't change the fact that hydrochloric acid is still a strong acid. When you're a jet, you're a jet. And when you're a strong acid, you're a strong acid, no matter how much of you is in the bathtub. You can have dilute weak acids. Vinegar is nothing but a low concentration of the weak acid acetic acid. Even if you were to concentrate acetic acid, it remains a weak acid. But in a concentrated form, it's actually the very dangerous glacial acetic acid. And if you wanna learn more about that, check out my video called The Most Dangerous Vinegar. Probably my best clickbait title yet. Any fan of Breaking Bad recognizes the villainous hydrofluoric acid, the acid of choice used to dissolve any foe of Walter White. Hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. It doesn't dissociate much, but it has the ability, for instance, to etch glass. It's not something to be trifled with at any concentration. Now, I do realize I've talked exclusively about strong and weak acids, but the term strong and weak apply to any electrolyte, anything that breaks up in ions, not just acids. Just like all poodles are dogs, not all dogs are poodles. All acids are electrolytes, but not all electrolytes are acids. Acids release H plus ions in a solution. Hydroxide is released by bases. And then any run-of-the-mill salt releases a whole host of ions into solution. For instance, table salt dumps sodium and chloride ions into solution that has no effect on pH at all. We put all kinds of salts in sports drinks under the advertising appeal of replacing the electrolytes lost during strenuous exercise. Just remember, not all electrolytes are benign. When you pull up to that lemonade stand and the kid's advertising extra electrolytes added, you better ask some follow-up questions. You could be dealing with a young version of the killer from the Jigsaw movies and they've spiked your lemonade with sulfuric acid. Oh, that's some serious electrolytes. I know what you're thinking, young Jigsaw? Hey, they did young Sheldon. Who knows what kind of spinoffs might be waiting for us in our TV futures. And I think that is a strong finish to video number seven. Wear a mask, wash your hands, check that lemonade, and have a great day.